Hello everyone and welcome to Programming in Access 2013, the advanced course. My name is Steve Bishop and in this video we're going to be talking about returning an error code from your command line or shell. And what this is indicating or what this video is going to be about is that oftentimes when you run those executable files or an external application, those applications will return back some sort of error code, whether it was a successful uh, you know, it successfully ran, or if there was some sort of problem, it's going to return back some sort of result to, uh, to Windows. And Windows can then pick that up and return it back to your VBA. Now, uh, if we look at the shell command that we have right now, unfortunately, the built-in shell command does not do this. It does not pick up on the exit code that this 7z.exe application will return back. So uh, if you look at the documentation of the 7-zip uh, uh, file, you'll see that there are just a few return codes or exit codes. A return code of zero means that there is no error running the command. Okay. If you get a code one, that means that it's just a warning and it's not fatal. A er exit code of two means that there was some sort of fatal error, but it's pretty generic. Uh, exit code of seven means specifically there was a problem with the command line. So something in the in the command that you wrote is incorrect. And error code eight means there's not enough memory for the operation. So maybe there just simply wasn't enough memory available at the time that you tried to run this. And an exit code of 255 means that the user stopped the process. So maybe it was taking too long to compress. You went to the task manager and just you know shut down the executable. Uh, and so it's gonna return back this 255. So regardless, if there are any sort of errors, or even if there's a success, you want your VBA code to respond accordingly, right? So if this command here does not execute properly, you probably don't want to continue on. Uh, in the example that we were talking about, where we were compressing the log files into this logs zip file so that we could then email it off to our developers, well, we can't really do that if the 7z.exe doesn't properly work, right? If there's some sort of problem doing this compression, we should know about it. We need to find out uh, if there was an error, and if not, then go ahead and continue. But if there was, then we need to halt the process to send that zip file. So how do we do this? Well, unfortunately, the shell function does not handle this very well. It does return back a value, but it's the wrong value that we're, than the one that we're looking for. Let me just show you. If we do, uh, if, if I just go ahead and do shell, and I wrap this up in parentheses, you'll see that the IntelliSense give us a return result of as double. So let's go ahead and pat, put this double result into some sort of um, variable here. I'm gonna call it result. And let's dim result as a double, okay? And then let's go ahead and print this result. So debug.print result, okay? And let me just clear that out here for you. So let's go ahead and save that, debug it. Everything looks good. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, let's run this. And if we get, um, let's see what a successful run of shell returns back, okay? Uh, oh, and if you think about it, right, <laughs> the 7z.exe, according to the uh, documentation, a zero means that there was no error, right? So if everything works fine, then zero is the result we should get. So let's go ahead and run this. And let's see what we have in our print window. And we get 64, 16. So that's not the zero we were expecting. I mean, there's our logs.zip file, and inside of it, there's our new logs folder and our files in there. So everything looks right. Why did we get back this error, uh, this number 6416? Well, if you go to the shell, and I'm just going to hit F1, close that stuff down, you'll see that the shell function returns a variant or double representing the program's task ID if successful. Otherwise, it returns zero. So what this is really saying is that when you run any 
executable. Whenever you run an application in Windows, Windows assigns it a task ID. Okay, so that just means that the executable opened and ran. It doesn't give us back any sort of result from the executable. It just tells us, hey, we went ahead and opened and ran. If there was a problem running the executable file, then it will return a zero. So that's things like it couldn't find the executable file or the executable file was invalid or something like that. Then it would return a zero. So in this case, it returned back the task ID or the uh, the, pro the Windows program ID that we could f that we could use to locate that 7z.exe as it's running. But that doesn't tell us the error code that comes back from the 7z.exe. So luckily, um, there is a solution. And really, this is a twofold problem that I'm, I'm going to show you here in just a moment. First, let's talk about what we can do uh, instead of this shell method. There is, if you go up to Tools and References, there is an, uh, an object library that we can use. If you scroll down here, all the way down to Windows Script Host Object Model, I'm going to select that. You'll see that it's in System32 WSHOM.OCX. That's the file. Go ahead and click OK. And now, the object you want to create, I'm going to go ahead and call it Shell. I'm going to new it up so it's going to be as new, and it's W. Oops, WSH shell. Okay. Now this is a much more robust library of things that you can do to work with Windows operating system. Okay. Uh, and in it, there is actually uh, something else we can do. So let me go ahead and comment that out. And it's going to be shell dot. And you'll see that we get some a variety of different um, properties and methods that are available to us, but the one we're interested in for right now is run. Now there are there are actually two methods on the WSH shell object that you can utilize. One is the run method. The other one is uh, so we've got the run method here. We also have the exec method, and I'll just show you the exec method is very similar. You just pass in one single command string. Uh, but the problem is, is that you have to kind of work with it a little bit differently than what I'm going to show you. It is certainly a viable option if you want to use the exec method. Uh, but I just find that using the run method just is a little bit simpler to work with. So uh, the run method you'll see takes three parameters. So we have str command, int window style, and b wait on return. And you'll see that we have int window style gives us basically the same types of things that we had with the shell command. We can hide the window, we can you know give it a focus, we can minimize it, maximize it, all that sort of good stuff. So that's what that is. Zero is the one I think we're going to go ahead and use, which just hides the window. And then there are this B wait on return will become very important, and I'll show you that in just a moment. So for right now, we've got our run. And we actually want to return the results of our run command into that result variable. But there is a difference here with run in that you can see it returns back as a long. So I need to change this up here from a double to a long. OK. Now let's go ahead and complete our command. So uh, let's see. We want to grab this whole thing here. Copy that. Put that in here. Now, Windows style, we're just going to use zero because, again, that's just our hidden window. And the B wait on return, I'm just going to go ahead and say false for right now. And, okay, so here we go. Let's see what the result is when we run this run command. Okay, let's go ahead and save that, debug. Everything looks good. Let's clear out our immediate window for now, and let's execute this. We get the system cannot find the file specified. If you go to debug, you'll see that it highlights that sh that run command. Well, if you recall in the last video, what we had to do because the new logs, uh, the new logs had a space in it, you'll notice that there is a space with the program files. So essentially, it's the same problem that we encountered over here. If 
we are trying to specify a path that has a space in it, then we need to wrap that path in parenthesis or in uh, in quotes. But since this is a string, we need to put in double quotes. So we need to go double quote there to indicate exclusively that that should be a quote. And then double quotes here for the 7z.exe. And now we should be able to go ahead and run this. So let's go ahead and compile it. Everything looks good. Let me just make sure that I get rid of this logs.zip file. And ready, let's go ahead and give it a try. Okay, we got no error messages, right? Down here we see, oh, look at that, an error code of zero. So the result value that came back from our 7z.exe was a zero, which means it was successful. And there's our logs.zip file, right? If I open this up, there's our new logs and our file. So everything looks to be going exactly how we wanted it to, right? So that should be the end of it, right? That should be all that we need to do. Well, not so fast. Let's say, let's go ahead and induce one of those errors so that we can catch what the error would be. And let's say that we send the wrong command. Okay, so something wrong, something is wrong with the command that we send it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and take this A off of here. I'm gonna leave out the command so that this is going to error out because there is no command being issued. It's just passing in this logs.zip and, uh, and the directory. So this isn't right, right? Everything is going to check out just fine in my VBA code, but the 7z.exe is going to hiccup on this command that we're issuing. So let me go ahead and clear out my immediate window. Let me go ahead and make sure I delete this logzip file. And now we should see, right, as a result, we should get a command line error code seven. So let's go ahead and, oops, let's go ahead and uh, let me reopen that. I didn't mean to close that, hold on. Uh, doo -doo -doo. There we go, okay. So let's go ahead and run this again. And look at our immediate window, we get zero. Well, wait a minute, that's kind of weird. Why do we have a zero? Our zip file didn't get created, but according to this, it says it worked just fine. What's the deal here? Well, in a way, this is kind of acting the same way as the original shell command did, in that if it was successful at finding this exe file and running it, there's no reason for it to have a problem. It's only going to encounter a problem if the executable file itself returns that problem. But the typical, uh, the typical process for VBA code is to issue this command and move on to the next one. So if it successfully issued the command, then okay, great, there's a result. But it's not waiting for the result to come back from the executable file itself. So that's where this little extra parameter right here comes in very handy. Let me just backtrack this so we can see the IntelliSense you'll see wait on return. This means that VBA code should actually wait until this command is completely successful or completely runs before it moves on to the next thing. So in the previous way this worked was it just ran this and then moved on to the next line. Now what we're saying is if we change this to wait on to return true, then it VBA code will not run this debug print until not only does the run method run, but the 7zip.exe file runs and closes. Okay, so true, wait on return true means don't continue on with the VBA code until I get something back from the 7zip.exe or that window closes. Okay, that's what we want to look for. Now, when we close, when we run this. I'm just going to go ahead and delete what's in the immediate window. And again, there's no zip file here. Now when I go ahead and run the button, or click on the button here to run our 7-zip, you'll see that we get our error message of 7. And this becomes very, very important later on. You'll find yourself oftentimes needing to run these external applications and finding out what they do 
uh, and see how successful they were before you can continue on with the rest of your code. So that's where you're going to want to use this shell uh, or you're going to want to use this WSH shell and you're going to want to do, do this uh, shell uh, this dot run method on that WSH shell. Okay, so that's all fine and good. But a lot of you guys, I know you're already screaming, wait a minute, this is early binding. I want to do late binding. Okay, so I'm just going to show you this. Change this to object, right? We're going to go ahead and uh, set shell equal to. And the create object. Now the class that you need to pass in here is w script dot shell okay that is the object that you are going to want to cre uh, use in your create object method if you want to do late binding for your uh, windows script shell object so uh, let me go ahead and just go to the references delete that or, or uncheck that I, I should say go ahead and clear this out save it debug yep everything checks out no zip file so we should still get that 7 here with our late binding because, uh, again, we have a problem with our command line since we took out that A command. And click on the button, and we get the result of, yep, there's our 7. And down here we have no zip file. But if we succeed because we put our A command in there, let's go ahead and try this one more time. There's our zip file, everything's in here, our log files, and our resulting code was, in fact, a zero. So we had a successful zip file created. Okay, so that's a lot to try to consume. I'm sure there's going to be some questions about this. Please feel free to drop your questions in the comments section below this video. Uh, I'll, I'll get to them as best as I can. I'm sorry if I don't answer your questions immediately or take some time. I'm doing my best. Uh, and again, if you know the answer to some of the questions, please feel free to speak up. Um, I really appreciate all the help you guys can get because uh, you guys can give because this is supposed to be a community. Uh, we're all trying to work together in order to get our projects done. And I really appreciate all the help you guys can provide uh, in my channel here. So anyway, please don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And I hope to see you guys in the next one.